Hi there, it's Daryl Holter from Sussex Heritage Community again. Um, I'm just going to go through a guest post that was written for us uh, by Colin Turode. So, here we go. For my guest post, I've chosen to write about a very simple item, but an item that illustrates how even an apparently mundane object can tell a fascinating story. This ordinary looking stone slab lies in the self transept of St Mary's Church West Ham, East Sussex, and could be easily overlooked. On the face of it, it is nothing more than a grave cover for PH1602. But that belies its history and the tumultuous events that played out around it. The inscribed crosses in the centre and top corners tell us that it is a mensa or altar table. The matching two crosses in the lower corners have been lost when the slab was shortened. Presumably it was upcycled into a grave slab. Every med medieval altar mensa was marked with these five consec consecration crosses. The altar also containing a confessio or sealed cavity into which a small relic of the church's patron saint was placed. Barring disaster, Mensas last forever, so there is no reason to assume other than this one was installed at the consecration of the church in the late 11th century. A disaster most certainly did happen though, not just to this Mensa but to all of them. It had played a central role in the life of the church for well over 400 years when the Eng English Reformation became radical under King Edward one of the targets of his injunctions was the altars, with orders that they may be removed and replaced by simple wooden tables. For some, the wide-reaching reforms would have been exactly what they had been waiting and praying for, but for many it was an unremitting disaster, with centuries of tradition and superstition ripped from under them. Here in Sussex, altars became a battleground, the fiercely traditional Bishop of Chichester, George Day, simply refused to uphold the injunctions and many of the altars undoubtedly stayed in place under his protection. In December of 1550, Bishop Day was arrested and placed before the Privy Council, where after repeated questioning on his refusal to order the removal of altars in his diocese, he declared that he would never obey to do this thing thinking it a lesser evil to suffer the body to perish than to corrupt the soul with that thing that his conscience would not bear. He was imprisoned in fleet and deprived of his bishopric, bishopric. Although Queen Mary would release and restore him at the moment she became queen in 1553. At this point, we are guessing as to what actually happened to this altar stone in West Ham. It was almost certainly removed after Bishop Day's arrest and replaced by the prescribed communion table in the nave, but, like many, it may have been put somewhere safe in a place where it could be retrieved if the old ways returned, as they did under the Catholic Queen Mary's Counter-Reformation. Queen Mary ordered that the floors of the churches be searched and that if and that if mensas had been laid as paving, they'd be restored to their former use. This was a short-lived reprieve, though, for with the reign of the Protestant Queen Elizabeth I and her 1559 injunctions, the altars were once again ordered to be removed. What we can say for sure is the family of P.H. made use of the ancient mensa as a gravestone, P.H. was Philippa, the wife of Miles Hodgson, vicar of St. Mary's. They had married in 1591 and had four children, the youngest being just two years old when Philippa died. The register records her burial in the chancel, even though the stone now lies here in the transept. Was it just convenient? Was it just a convenient piece of stone to use as a grave cover by 1602? It had probably been redundant for 40 years by that point, but clearly it had survived. Maybe stored once again, just in case. 
Shortening it and removing two of the consecration crosses may well have destroyed it for good as a mensa. Even the act of laying it in the floor where it would be walked upon may have been a calculated insult for the former holiest of items, now nothing more than flooring in the eyes of the reformed religion. Although perhaps by lying it in the chancel as a grave for his wife, Miles may have been giving it a gentler end. Maybe Miles Hodgson was even nodding at the at this stone at the stone's place in history of his church. It is impossible to know. It may be a simple slab of stone. It doesn't glitter or shine. But it still has a story to tell. Thank you, Colin. That is brilliant. And I look forward to another guest post very soon. Take care. Bye now.